It could be an army unit anywhere in black Africa. In fact, they're simply Rhodesian Africans being trained up for eventual service as drivers and mechanics in the Rhodesian army. In a time of high unemployment amongst blacks here, even the government admits the motives for joining are probably more financial than political. Recruitment of black trainees over the past five years has gone up in this training centre from 30 a year to over 400. But the majority are still only being taken on to fill non-combat jobs from which white personnel can be freed to maintain the strengths of units at the front. Nevertheless, they are trained in the handling of weapons. And this in itself has already posed problems. As one officer admitted, substandard recruits have had to be kept on to prevent them, through dismissal, taking the basic elements of their training to the other side. Recruits that I talked to refused to discuss why they joined the army. Earning twice the average African income, these men are prepared to go to considerable lengths to prove themselves. But beyond the money, the inducements to join the army rather than the guerrillas include free food and accommodation. But what the Smith government cannot buy is the strength of ideological commitment that the guerrillas get for free. And what no one can answer is whether these men will maintain their assault course enthusiasm when confronted with the possible reality of losing a war on the side of the whites against their eventual African masters. John Snow, News at 10, in Como Barracks, Rhodesia.